Welcome to another episode, Sailing Ruby Rose from Saigon. This is Saigon Shipyard and that is hull number one. Lots to talk through with you all today. First thing you're gonna notice is this, target arch. This whole evolution of the boat design, the boat build is coming through. So let's just start with the hull, hull, then deck. Then they put the coach roof on to try it and now they have the target arch. This is actually a try-in arch and it's made almost completely in fiberglass. It is now apparent that every single major structural component for the boat, they are doing a mock-up in fiberglass first. They did this with the bulkhead and now they're doing it with the Tiger Arch. It's a beautiful piece of kit and actually slightly squarer than I thought it would. I do love this kind of neo-retro design that they're putting into this. And obviously Tiger Arches are part of the kind of signature look of Sea Winds. So that will then be made up almost completely in carbon fiber. There's a lot of unidirectional strands and unidirectional matting in carbon fiber that's gonna go into this. So again, a very, very big but lightweight piece. And we're also gonna take a look through hull one and see what else they've done. I haven't been here for a few weeks, but there's a lot to see. So join us as we take a walk through of hull one, two, three, four, five, now six. Keep watching. And so finally, the target arch is lifted into the place using the overhead hoists. As you can see, this is far, far easier in the new factory. Now, this is all got to be tried in and has to be absolutely millimeter perfect. So the first target arch was constructed in MDF. The second one is constructed in fiberglass, and it is really just to make sure that everything goes into place down to the millimeter. There were some adjustments to be done when it was lifted into place. James, being the consummate engineer, made sure that everything was lined up at the right angle and then adjusted it slightly, made some adjustments with Khan. And the final result is that they had to take it away. They've done some work on it. And now this really was being used as a template. This was the final template before they go to constructing the target arch in carbon fiber. Super, super interesting there. And now that this is all in place we are really starting to see a boat in its entirety so here we are target arch just for the shape of it it is very 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 square octagonal in cross section just to reiterate this is just a mock-up this is why it looks a bit shabby it is just to get it in place you have a really good idea of exactly how wide this is. I would say that you've got a good three meter gap here just between these two. That is a huge space. It's only now that I actually get to start visualizing exactly how much space we've got because before this, what we had was this kind of like the hard top on, but now we've got a really, a really good idea of living space with the mock-ups for the furniture in place for the galley, with the target arch in place. This actually gives us a really, really good look of space and exactly what we're gonna have to live with. So let me just take us a walk through here, hull one. Don't forget hull two, Ruby Rose is there and now sequentially all the way down to six and I think seven's actually going into the mold. So listen, what do we have? Locker lids. So again, we can see exactly how big these lockers are gonna be. So again, lockers for storage and storage. Life raft goes there. Now just bear in mind regarding life rafts, you get to choose where you put your life raft. Hull One is not having the stone mounted life raft. We are because we definitely, definitely, definitely gonna be doing offshore passages with this and I have a whole thing about offshore passages. So we lose the locker there because we are having our life raft placed there. As we walk through, there's a lot to see on Hull Two. Let me just show you what we have now. And this is probably one of the only times you're gonna see this because you've got so much light coming through because they've taken the hard top off to fit the target arch. Saloon seating, all done. And we can see the amount of storage that we're gonna have just down here. Assuming these lockers stay empty. This locker is probably in one part about a meter deep. This is normally where batteries are kept. But then we've still got this space around here where galley furniture is going to go in, galley furniture, and then this whole, whole area, which is living space. So there is a lot, a lot going on here with things like locker lids that are now going onto hole one and the whole foredeck coming to like coming together there is a lot of beautiful stuff to see so let us take a quick walk through hole one let me start with the deck because there's things i want to show you again because so many of you ask about storage and we do make a whole whole thing about exactly how much storage we're going to have so let me show you so just up onto the deck you can just see just how much space 
there is around here. For a 45 foot boat, huge. Just talking through this, the size of these lockers are huge. That is actually six, seven foot steps going down, a partition that can be added or removed. That's pretty amazing. And then things that are now coming through from the shop. Now the stainless steel work is all in place. You can also see this whole section, the longer on, how it will take a spinnaker. And then obviously you've got the attachment point for spinnaker, the anchoring point there, super clever. And other things that are now starting to come through, you will notice this beautiful little item as the box for the base of the mast. So that is where the mast will step to. So that again will bolt through to here. So masts have already been delivered. We have the four beam there. It is literally like a Lego kit where we have a lot of equipment. Yeah absolutely stunning stunning boat so despite the delays we are starting to see hull one really coming together hull two now that the deck is on they can now move on to kind of really accelerating that whole process and as you look back you can see two three four five six so honestly a lot a lot going on here let me just take a quick dive down here as you can see on the port side of hull one in the master cabin, the bulkheads are all now in place. The walk-in wardrobe is complete and fitted, but these bulkheads are obviously just the MDF ones. And although not a lot has changed, just outside there are some little touches that are actually very, very pleasing to see. With the headliners off, you can see the stainless steel backing plates. These have all been glassed in and bolted through. Now, this is very different to Ruby Rose where they were not glassed in. But now being able to see this, strength and stability on places like the winches, which take a huge amount of load. Super interesting to see. Again, it's the little details that actually make me very, very excited about this boat. And you can also see there the motors for the electric winches. Off with hull one, looking at hull two, the deck is now on and bonded. Now again, far, far smoother than hull one because everything is actually getting more streamlined as they get more used to the processes. But super exciting to see our boat finally taking shape. Good morning. Apologies for the weird camera angle today. In life in Vietnam, I'm gonna tell you about, more about Vietnamese food and Vietnamese culture. One thing that is, sorry, I live next to a chicken farm. I do, that's why there's a sound of chickens. One thing I do wanna tell you about Vietnamese culture, they don't really differentiate between meals. So whereas in Western culture, breakfast would be something and dinner would be something else they just eat the same meals all the time which basically means for me it's a good thing because it means i can eat whatever i want whenever i want so today i'm gonna take you to one of my favorite breakfast places to eat some traditional vietnamese gom dam broken rice it's actually super tasty so let's get on the bike and um go for a spin So this is my favorite Gom Tam place. It's uh, cheap, cheerful, food is amazing. People are lovely. It's a really good Vietnamese breakfast. Let's uh, go inside and have a little look at this. Hello. Hello. Rock on. Big boy. Go, hold on, take away. So this is the end result. It's com dam literally com means rice and dam means broken and it comes from a time when the Vietnamese had so little food that this is just they could only get broken rice, so not incomplete rice. It is a pork chop, generally a marinated pork chop. It is rice and with opla, which opla is fried egg. It is all served with chili sauce, iced tea, and is absolutely delicious. I have this all the time. It is super, super tasty, cheap, and real authentic Vietnamese food. And you will find these Gong Town places all around Vietnam. And as I keep saying to all of you who are looking to explore Vietnamese food in your home countries, just see what there is. There's so many of these restaurants, and Gong Town is a staple of Vietnamese diet. So. I'm gonna dig in, enjoy this. If you enjoyed this video, there's boat building, there's life in Vietnam. Just give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and I will be back again with more life in Vietnam. So enjoy.